So I cut out my Hickok 600A. Now this is a mutual conductance. In fact, this is one of the, the Cadillac tube testers. The Hickok tube testers that did mutual conductance were considered the best in their day and even to this day. They also made this same model later under the 6000 number and the military a TV7, but they're all basically the same circuit. So let's look up at 83. Now remember I said a mutual conductance tester doesn't do you any special good with rectifiers. But the reason we're using this one is because it does have that 4-pin socket that we need. And it will test a Type 83 tube. But it tests it only for emission, of course, because there's no grids in a rectifier. Okay, here is the tube list for a Type 83. You may notice that there to the left it says that it has a 5-volt filament. There are two tests for it, because there are two lines. The first one is JR0300D. The second one is JR02000. Zero. And I think I read that wrong. I think that's a zero there on their first test. And then 62P3, first test plate number one, second test plate number two. So let's set it up and see how it reads. Okay, we got it in the right socket. We got it all set up. By the way, the reason I don't use the roll chart is they get kind of old and the paper gets brittle with age. So on these old tube testers, if you want to preserve the roll chart, it's better to get you a printout of all the settings to use and just leave the roll chart in one position so you don't tear the paper or mess up the mechanism. So the first thing we have to do here is we have to do the line adjust, which is right here. We push that and then we move the meter up to that position where it says line test. So I'm going to do that now, but I'm going to need a second hand, so I'm going to stop the camera. Okay, now I've set it. I'll adjust the line test. You see it's right on. And that's very important uh, with a mutual conductance tester, especially when testing uh, triodes, pentodes, and so on because line voltage varies from one place to another. And back in the day, it varied a lot more than it does even today. So we need to make sure we have that set. The next thing we do is we set the bias to zero and the English to 62. So we've gone through the shorts position. The light didn't light. Now we put it in the tube test position and we press this. And it's not great. In fact, it's fallen off pretty good not in very good condition. So let's set up for the other side, but it looks like this is not a very good 83. Okay, the only thing you have to do to change to the other test is to change the plate switch from 3, where it was, to 2. So we've done that, and now we'll press rectifier again. Once again, we're getting pretty crazy readings. So I'm not sure whether this 83 is any good, but that's actually not going to be a problem because I'm planning to replace this 83 along with the selenium rectifiers that are in here with new modern silicon diodes. There are the selenium rectifiers. So along with upgrading the capacitors and checking the resistors and so on, we're also going to replace those and we're going to replace this Type 83 tube with modern silicon rectifiers. Now that will mean we'll have to recalibrate the tester, but we have instructions for doing that and I'll show you how that's done if we get this thing working. 